Welcome to this video, great to have you on board. In this video, we'll add a navigation bar to our page so that we can get started building a real page and what better way to get started than by adding a responsive navigation bar, of course using Bootstrap 4. So I'm back in the project as I left it at the end of the last video and there we just played around with the grid. So therefore what I can do here is I can get rid of all the style assignments in the head section and actually get rid of the entire body content because that was just the dummy grid. I'll now also add a main.css file which I'll use to store my CSS code for the future and I'll import it with a link element in the index.html file pointing to main.css. Okay, so this is how I want to work with CSS now. I don't actually need to write that much CSS code though. In this video, my goal is to add a nav bar. Now since we cleaned up that body content, our web page, if we reload it, essentially looks like this. So let's add a navigation bar now by adding a nav element. Now this is the default HTML nav element and here's one important thing, just as in all the other cases, Bootstrap pretty much only works with CSS classes. It doesn't automatically turn this into a nicely styled bootstrap navigation bar because there might be cases where you want to use that element without getting the bootstrap navigation bar. Hence, to turn this into a navigation bar controlled and styled by bootstrap, I have to add a class, the navbar class, like this. Now, if we save that and we reload the page, we still don't really see that much, do we? Well, the reason for this is, of course, we need to add some content. So inside of that nav bar, why don't we add an anchor tag, which leads nowhere in our case, where we have our brand, let's say. So in my case, Academy, and this could also be an image. Now I will give this anchor tag a special class and that class should be nav bar dash brand which will make sure that this is styled and positioned in a nice way in the top left corner of the navigation bar, which is where you typically have your clickable brand, which leads you back to your homepage on most pages. If we add this and we reload, we see that brand here, but I don't really see a navigation bar, do you? Well, we need to add more classes to the nav element. There, we should also add nav bar light to set the theme, and BG light for the background theme. If we add that and we reload, now all of a sudden we got a nice gray nav bar spanning the full width of the page and you see the brand style also was adjusted. It's still clickable, but it looks less like a link, which is of course what we want. So this is now our better looking nav bar. Now typically you want to have more than just a brand in the nav bar, you want to have some clickable items. So for that, what we can do is we can add an unordered list in that nav bar and give that unordered list a class of nav bar dash nav to indicate that this holds our actual menu items. There we can add a menu item by adding a list item, of course, with a link inside of it, maybe our users page. And that list item in turn also receives a class, the nav dash item class. Now we can also give that link a class and that will be the nav link class. So this is the structure we typically set up for navigation items or for menu items in the navigation bar. We have the nav bar nav wrapper around all the list items, then the individual list item and in that list item we typically got a link which then also should get the nav link class here. Now if we do that and we save this, if we reload the page, we can see the link here nicely positioned on the right side of the navigation bar. So this is automatically done for you by Bootstrap. Now you can change the positioning by going to that unordered list with the class nav bar nav and adding MR auto, margin right auto. If you do that, it'll actually be positioned on the left instead of on the right. Since Bootstrap uses Flexbox, this automatically leads to that positioning. We can inspect this. If we have a look at this unordered list, you see that with margin right set to auto, it actually fills up all the entire space with this, well, margin to the right. And hence, this 
unordered list with all its list items is pushed all the way to the left. If you remove that rule, which you do by removing um, MR auto, it actually is positioned across the entire nav bar because that on the other hand is just how the nav bar works. It uses display flex and then it also positions its elements with space between. So MR auto is a nice way of moving the elements to the left if you want that. I will remove that though because I don't want that behavior. I want to have this space in between. And with that, let's dive deeper. Let's add more list items, for example. We can add a second list item, which could be products, something like that. If we now save this, hmm, this actually adds a new line instead of adding this next to the other list item. Now, why is that? The response can be found if we inspect the unordered list with the nav bar nav class. There we see that the flex direction is actually set to column instead of row. Now this is not a bug, this is on purpose because Bootstrap 4 is built in a mobile first way. Now because of that mobile first approach, we can also build our navigation bar in a mobile first way. We do that by adding a div with a class collapse nav bar dash collapse. And this div will actually wrap this unordered list. Now with that, if we save that and we reload, this is gone. We don't see the nav items anymore. This is because we now need to tell Bootstrap how long or from which point on we actually want to render our menu items in the nav bar instead of in a toggleable uh, drop down menu, so to say. We do this by adding a nav bar dash expand class to the nav element and then you set a breakpoint defining from which point on should elements be added to the nav bar. This could be LG to only add them on big screens for example. With that if you reload, if you increase the size you add them on bigger screens. And now you see they are also added on the left here instead of on the right. Now this just happens to be the default. You can go to nav or nav and where we used MR auto previously to push it to the um, to the left, we can now use ML auto to add some margin to the left automatically to the list items to move them back to the right if we wanted that behavior. So I will go back to the very default though, so that you can also recognize this code in the official documentation if you look it up there. And so now we're back to a navigation bar where items are removed once we go below a certain size. And of course we can change that breakpoint. We could set it to SM for example, and now the menu items will be there much longer. They will only disappear on small devices. Now the question of course is, how do we bring them back for small devices then? They disappear because maybe we were running out of space in the navigation bar, but where do we then display them? Well, in some extra menu which can be toggled. The problem just is, we got no toggle button. Well, we can add this too with the nav bar bootstrap offers us. To add such a toggle button, we can add it here after the brand, you could also in front of it, add a button and give it a class of nav bar toggler because that is what this button will do in the end. Now on this button, you don't write anything, but in there you simply add a span, which in turn should get a class of nav bar toggler icon. This will give you the hamburger menu in the end. Now if we save that and we reload, now we get that toggle button here and for bigger screens, if we increase that, this will be removed and we get the menu items instead. That's cool, but clicking the button doesn't do anything. This has two reasons. The first reason is that we need to add something to that button to make it work and that is the data-toggle property or attribute, I should say, which we set to collapse. Now this will be used by Bootstrap's JavaScript package. It will automatically listen to clicks on that button then and it will open the menu for us and close it if it's open. Uh, all of that done automatically. The problem is even with that change, if we reload, nothing happens. The reason for that is very simple though. We haven't included the Bootstrap script packages. So let's head over to getbootstrap.com and click on get started. And previously I only fetched the CSS portion Let's now also fetch these free scripts. That includes jQuery. Yeah, Bootstrap still uses jQuery. On which it builds up. 
however, in a very slim version, so it's probably fine for that. Another helper library and the bootstrap JavaScript code itself, which in the end will do that click listening I was talking about. We can put that code at the end of our body section to load it last. And with that, if we now reload the page, we can click that button and still don't see anything. Well, there's one more missing piece. We added that data toggle, which is great. This will actually lead to a listener being set up, but we also need to define a data dash target attribute, which points at the element, the menu we wanna toggle, because that is something you can configure. There you choose a CSS selector, recommended is using an ID, for example, the navbar menu. The name is totally up to you. The important thing is you now just need to assign this as an ID to your collapsible menu. And with that, I'm referring to that div which wraps the menu. So this div now receives an ID which has to fit that data target you defined up here, navbar menu in my case here. And with that added, we can save this. And now if we reload the page, we can indeed toggle our menu here. This is how we can add a very basic navbar. Now below the video, you'll find a link to the official docs where you can dive much deeper and also learn how you can include a search bar into your nav and so on. One thing that I want to show you right away is how you can set different schemes, color schemes for this nav bar. Right now we're using the light scheme here with nav bar light and BG light. Now we can change this, for example, to nav bar, whoops, nav bar dark and BG dark. If we do that, we got a dark nav bar and you see the text and the menu button automatically adjusts. So this is pretty cool and this allows you to quickly add a navigation bar with basic features to your page. Now I hope that these basic explanations were helpful, especially regarding the responsiveness and how you can move menu items around, position them to the right, to the left. Definitely dive into the official docs if you wanna learn more about it and hopefully see you in a future video too. Bye.